right, here we are. I prepared for you a random list of creative people that happen to write music. Some of them are composers well known. This list offers a composition that you will see and some context about the composition, not necessarily musical, to see that art sometimes doesn't come from art itself, or creativity is not fueled by art. The first is Ligeti and Volumina. Ligeti had a passion for taking the instruments and the performers to their limits. In this piece, the organ is taken to its limit. It sounds for hours. Sound here is conceived as an object that occupies space. That's its notation in the three-dimensional space. The next one that we're gonna see is Cornelius Cardio and Treatise. In his own words about this piece, he said, I wrote treaties with the definite in intention that it should stand entirely on its own without any form of introduction to mislead prospective performers into the slavish practice of doing what they are told. The slide four is Nettie Simmons, interesting personality, multifaceted. She was not only a composer, but also a mathematician. She had degrees both in music and mathematics. And she was notable in her incorporation of unconventional elements in his, her pieces, such as electronics and found objects. Charles Ives spent the majority of his professional life working in the insurance industry. He believed that his career in insurance provided him with financial stability and independence to, to write her stuff. And he also funded the projects of his friends, like Henry Cowell and Carl Ruggles. Tomas Marco, Spanish composer, also a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After five years working in music, he started his own magazine to critique the works of other composers. He was successful, I don't know why, but he did that and on top of writing this type of piece, and he's still alive. Gavin Breyers, a British composer, gained widespread recognition for his minimalist composition, Jesus' blood never failed me yet. This piece features a looped recording of a homeless man singing a fragment of a hymn. I had the privilege to work with him and this piece in big years in 2016. Uh, Milton Babbitt, I would say one of the fathers of total serialism or control freak of composition, had a lifelong love with Broadway musicals. He wrote one musical, but in 1946, it didn't do well, so his life changed and he stopped doing that for some reason. But uh, he had that. Um, the next one is Alberto Ginastero, the first one of uh, my today Argentinian trifecta. He is one of the composers who um, incorporated nationalism and he, started, he included this uh, uh, traditions by, of the gauchos, this horseman from Argentina, and this is uh, Danza del Gaucho Matrero. After Piazzolla, who started, studied with Ginastera, um, he was a bandoneonist and composer, and in his spare time, he um, liked to fish for sharks. And he, this piece called Escualo, which is shark in Spanish, is, somehow represents the movement of the shark trying to get away. The last one of the Argentina trifecta is Gerardo Gandini, uh, amazing composer, pianist, and the fact that I have about him is that Piazzolla asked him to play with, in his group many times after his uh, second four bypass in, from the IQ, uh, ICU, so he was very persuasive. The next one is uh, Yanis Senakis, one of my favorite. He was uh, an architect, and he worked with Le Corbusier, in uh, projects including the Philips Pavilion of the National International Fair in uh, Brussels 58, which is uh, sort of the cousin of our sun sphere. Uh, Pauline Oliveros, uh, also another favorite of mine, she was interested in doing music and meditation. She wrote this piece called Sonic Meditations in which you are supposed to meditate while making music. And uh, what she says is music is a welcome byproduct of this activity. Maria Grever, Mexican composer, wrote many tunes or songs, if you want, like a melody with an accompaniment. She wrote more than a thousand, and when she was 18, sold more than three million copies of this one and others, so think about that. She wrote film music and for Paramount and 20th Century Fox Studios. Uh, Nora Douglas Holt, very well-traveled and a going personality. She used to put all her work in a box, 
let's say, in storage, and leave and travel. When, once this box was vandalized and she lost all of it, but that, and so that's the only one we get. Uh, Maria Teresa de Jesus Carreño, also uh, a woman pianist, virtuoso, um, played for President Lincoln in the White House and moved to Paris to sing in the mid 1860s and studied, studied with uh, uh, Rossini. The next one is a wonderful story um, about blind Tom Wiggins. It's not wonderful, I would say. It's, it's remarkable. His performances were wildly popular. He was one of the most well compensated artists of the time. He was enslaved. Uh, he earned the uh, Bootham family up to $100,000 a year, so a very uh, specific uh, amount. Steve Reich uh, is uh, the next and last is uh, a composer that I appreciate very much because he managed to um, incorporate in his art things that we associate as being bad in music, like feedback, repetition, and all that. The last one is a piece that I did for you, I, that I brought for you, I did for you because you're in Knoxville. It's based on um, uh, a nat uh, like a natural phenomenon that occurs here, which is the is isochronous fireflies. It's called Blink, and it was commissioned by the Knoxville Symphony. And I wanted to say that, uh, thank you for uh, instructing me. This is the first time I thought this was going to be much more casual. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I wrote a script. Uh, I, thought, I thought that people would say, hey, who goes next? So thank you so much. <laughs>